I want to tell you about something weird that happened to us while we were building our small house in Utah. It's like something from a scary story, and I still can't understand it. We got this nice three-acre piece of land in Utah for our dream of living in a small house. We planned to have a garden and be able to take care of ourselves. Both of us grew up on farms, so we knew how to do things. It's just me and my wife, and we've always liked being outside. The place where we were is pretty far away from everything, surrounded by big woods and with a wide open sky above. We started building our small house a few months ago and worked on it almost every day. It was hard work, but it was worth it. So this happened about two weeks ago. We had finished working for the day and it was getting dark. We were outside, sitting by a fire, drinking a couple of sodas and enjoying the quiet. And that's when it started. We heard a sound that wasn't normal for the area, and it was like a low rumble coming from the edge of the woods. At first we thought it might be a bear, so we got some food and got ready to go in the truck if we needed to, but the sound was strange. It wasn't like any animal we knew. We tried not to be scared and just listened and watched. We whispered to each other and tried to keep doing what we were doing, but soon we saw it. It was big, like the size of a bear, but it wasn't a bear. It had thick black fur, and its eyes were glowing red, like they were really shining. It was standing at the edge of the forest, moving around us and looking at us from different directions. We didn't move, and we stopped talking but stayed close together, trying to silently tell each other what to do. Later we agreed that the creature felt different, like it wasn't just an animal. It felt strange like it was from another world. It started coming towards us, slowly coming out of the trees and into the open where we were. It moved so quietly for something so big and we were really scared. What do you even do when something like that happens? We were far from anyone who could help us, and our phones didn't work out there. Just as it got close enough for us to see it clearly, it stopped. Its eyes were moving all over, looking at us, the house we were building, and the fire. Its fur was so dark it seemed to swallow up the light, and its muscles were big, even under all that fur. It just stood there, not far from us, and I thought the darkness of its fur made its glowing eyes stand out even more, like hot coals in a dark room. That's what I thought, and the way its eyes and fur were so different. It was strange how my brain worked sometimes. It was so big that it made us feel small and weak, and nature is always stronger than us. Its shoulders were wide and strong, and you could see its muscles move under its fur when it moved. It looked like a creature built to be strong, like it was the biggest, toughest thing in the woods. It wasn't a skinny, sneaky animal. It was strong, well-fed, and it moved like it knew it was powerful. It moved so quietly and smoothly, which was scary, and big animals usually make noise when they move, but this thing was like it was floating. Then it went back into the dark woods, and we felt both relieved and shocked. It was almost as quiet after it left as it was when it was there. My wife and I looked at each other, scared and amazed. We didn't say anything for a while, just listened to the sounds of the night. Believe it or not, we stayed out there, but the days after that were strange. We kept working on our house, but we often talked about that night. We never saw the creature again, but we'll never forget that night. Now our small house is finished and we're happy with it. But sometimes, when it gets dark, we look into the woods, half expecting to see those glowing red eyes or to hear the quiet footsteps of the creature that visited us that unforgettable night. On a bitterly cold day in the winter of 2016, I stepped out of my car into the gray afternoon and I found myself at the deserted Batsto village on that chilly day. I've always been fascinated by ghost towns, by places lost in time with stories to tell, and Batstow had more stories than most places. It was growing late, the sky a mix of fiery colors, which clashed with the cold air. The sunset was beautiful, gold and crimson blending together, but the village itself was mostly shadows now. Long, eerie shadows stretched everywhere, making the place feel like an adventure waiting to unfold. I had read many tales of the Jersey Devil, of strange sightings that made your skin crawl, but I was always skeptical, eager to debunk those myths. 
Yet there was something about Batstow that drew me, enough to leave the warmth of my apartment for an exploratory stroll through this relic of the past. As I walked, the only sounds were the crunch of gravel under my boots, and I could hear the quiet whispers of the wilderness and caught a faint smell of sulfur. All the signs of the legendary devil were there, but there was no undeniable proof. I wrapped my coat tighter around me as goosebumps prickled my skin and headed towards the iconic Batstow mansion. It felt like stepping back in time as I explored, and there were old shackles, ruined houses, and a blacksmith shop, all fading into the twilight. The closer I got to the mansion, the quieter it became, an unnatural silence that seemed to weigh on me. It was as if even nature was holding its breath. As I wandered alone, an odd feeling crept over me, a sense of being watched but not in a comforting way. It felt like I was intruding on something sacred. I kept looking around for any signs of life, but there was nothing. Just an eerie emptiness, surrounded by the gathering darkness. Shaking off the feeling, I reminded myself that I was rational and level-headed. Normally, I didn't scare easily. It's just your imagination, I told myself. But the laughter sounded hollow, so I tried to focus on the path ahead, resisting the urge to keep looking over my shoulder. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary or nothing strange could be seen, but that nagging feeling refused to leave entirely. Just as I turned back towards the path, I heard a rustle behind me. A small movement, maybe just a woodland creature. With growing curiosity, I turned to investigate and was eager for something thrilling and unknown. Little did I know I was about to experience the most bizarre encounter of my life. My evening stroll was about to take a turn into the unknown, and I was not prepared for what happened next. As I turned, I felt a sudden drop in temperature, despite being bundled up. I could see my breath fogging up in front of me, adding to the eerie atmosphere. But that wasn't what froze me in place. A figure emerged, a terrifying sight that became clearer with each passing second. It had an elongated horse-like face on a scaly body that seemed more reptile than mammal. But the most horrifying part was the pair of bat-like wings sprouting from its back, looming over me. The silence of the village was shattered by a horrible screech as the creature flew off into the night. I had never seen anything like it in my life, a horrifying blend of bat, lizard, and horse. My heart pounded as I watched the Jersey Devil fly over the old Batstow mansion. In terror and awe, I stumbled backward, seeking refuge in an old carriage house, and without hesitation, I ran and hid inside, listening as the creature's wings faded into the distance. When I finally dared to peek outside, the Devil was gone, leaving me shaken and sweating. I replayed the scene in my mind, struggling to believe what I had seen. As I got into my car, every part of me screamed to leave, but I couldn't shake the feeling of disbelief. I swear I saw the Jersey Devil right there in front of me. So now as I write down my encounter, I can't shake the cold dread that grips me. I'm not going to let fear stop me from exploring. After all, isn't this thrill what I came for? Only time will tell if it was my intuition or just a fool's fantasy. I'm not your usual kind of person, and the job I do isn't your everyday thing either. My work? I fix up old things, especially old machines. Think about clocks, music boxes, and similar stuff. It's a bit of a different job, but I've always found the ins and outs of old machines fascinating. This job takes me to all kinds of places, like old houses or big properties where people have kept treasures hidden away. This story happened in late September on a huge piece of land in rural Montana. I was there because the person who owned it, an older man who had passed away recently, had a lot of old clocks. His family wanted them looked at and fixed up before they sold them. The property was really big, with thick forests all around and a few old buildings falling apart here and there. One of them was a worn-down barn, standing a bit crooked in a field, its wood all gray from many years of tough weather. I got there late in the day, and the plan was to sleep in the main house and start work early the next day. My truck, full of tools and gear, rumbled down the gravel path toward the barn. I thought I'd check out the barn first. Sometimes you find the coolest old things in places like that. Something about that barn felt strange. 
Stranger than other barns I've been in, not like in a scary movie, but it just felt different. As I got closer to the barn, I heard a soft scraping sound coming from inside. The part of me that thinks logically said it might just be animals, but I wasn't totally convinced. The sound made me hesitate, but I pushed the creaky barn doors open anyway. The light coming through the broken wood made everything look a bit funny at first, but as my eyes got used to it, I saw something that seemed like it came from a fantasy story. In the dim light filtering through the cracks, I saw it. A creature, really tall and skinny, with skin like pale, dead leaves. It looked like it was in pain, hunched over, with arms that were too long and fingers that ended in sharp nails. But its eyes were what got me, a bright yellow glowing in the dim light. Right away I knew it was a crawler, something I'd heard stories about but never thought was real. Yet there it was. The crawler didn't come toward me, so I started backing away slowly, not wanting to upset it. It just stood there, watching me with eyes that felt almost human. It tilted its head like it was trying to figure me out, just like I was trying to understand it. Its skin was a spooky pale, stretched tight over its bony frame and you could see its ribs under the skin, and its arms were too long, hanging down with fingers that almost touched the ground. But those eyes, those glowing yellow eyes, they seemed smart even though the creature looked scary. I couldn't move, not because I was scared, but because I was amazed. Here was a creature that shouldn't exist, yet there it stood, not far from me, and its eyes never left mine. Then it made a strange sound, not like a growl, but something more complicated. I didn't understand it, but it gave me chills. The air in the barn suddenly felt colder, or maybe it was just my nerves, and I knew I had to get away from that creature. As I stepped back, it did the same, retreating into the shadows of the barn. I backed out of the barn, keeping my eyes on the crawler. As the daylight faded, it blended into the darkness. The rest of the night, I couldn't stop thinking about what I saw. And the next morning, I felt drawn back to the barn. I needed to see the crawler again. As I got closer to the barn, the morning light showed how old and broken it was. Every step made the wood creak, and I half expected the crawler to be there. But the barn was empty, except for the feeling that it had been there. I spent the day working in the main house, but my thoughts kept going back to the barn. As evening came, I decided to take one more walk around the property. The sun was setting, making long shadows. The air felt chilly. I found myself at the edge of the woods, hearing the same strange sound I heard from the crawler before. It was coming from the woods now. Without thinking, I followed the sound into the forest. The trees were close together, and it got darker the deeper I went, but the sound kept getting louder. Then I saw it again, standing at the edge of a clearing. Its eyes glowed, and it watched me come closer, but this time, it felt like it recognized me from before. I stopped a few steps away, not sure what to do, then the crawler tilted its head, studying me. Suddenly it came closer, and I didn't move. It stopped in front of me, so tall it felt like it was towering over me. We stood there for a while, just looking at each other. Then it reached out and touched my shoulder with one of its long arms. I flinched, but its touch was warm. In that moment, I felt all sorts of things. Curiosity, loneliness, like we understood each other without saying anything, but it didn't last long. The crawler pulled back and disappeared into the forest. I stood there, alone. Walking back to the house, I knew this would stay with me. I came to fix old things, but I left with a story that was more amazing than anything I'd ever seen. The Crawler, a creature from stories, was now part of my story, too. Hey there, I've got a really interesting tale to share with you, and you know, I've been hooked on the stories you have on your site for a long time. My life's pretty cool. My spouse and I run a farm with goats in Vermont, and sometimes we make soap from goat milk to earn some extra cash. We're still new to this, only been at it for a few years. But last night was quite something. It was after 9.30 and my spouse and I heard this strange sound outside. It sounded like one of our goats had wandered off, but the noise was different. I rushed to the barn with my spouse right behind me. The light outside was pretty dim, so I couldn't see much. 
Inside the barn, all our goats were huddled together at one end, making a lot of noise. It was still dark, so I grabbed my flashlight, and there it was, munching on hay in the corner, this creature. It looked like a big, black-haired monkey or something. It turned to look at us, making weird noises. We yelled and waved broom handles, but it didn't even move. We couldn't scare it off, so we went back to put on warmer clothes since it was freezing out there in just our thin night clothes and jackets. When we got back, there was another loud scream and thuds against the barn wall. Fully dressed now, I hurried through the snow back to the barn. I entered slowly this time with my flashlight ready. There it was, still nibbling on hay, looking nervous but not aggressive, and I thought, let's just leave it be. But my spouse wanted it out of there. Pronto, I had never seen anything like it. Small black with long limbs and big hands and feet. Its face resembled a baboon with red eyes glowing in the flashlight. Then my spouse asked if we should call for help, but I doubted anyone would take us seriously. So I suggested waiting until the next day to see if it returned. But before we could decide, the creature leaped up and dashed out of the barn into the night. At least we didn't have to figure out how to get rid of it. So we locked up the barn tightly and went to bed. It was all we could do at the moment. The next morning, my spouse woke me up early, around 5.30, insisting we check the barn again. I was tired and the barn seemed secure, so we waited until it was fully light before heading out. Everything looked fine, thankfully, but we decided to keep the goats in their stalls during the day, just to be safe. Then, night fell again, and while we were relaxing in the living room with the TV on low, we heard that scream from the barn followed by thumping on the walls. I dashed upstairs to get dressed properly, telling my spouse to come with me. We hurried through the snow to the barn. As I approached, I noticed a window open, swinging in the breeze. It gave me chills, wondering how it got opened from the outside. I pushed open the barn door. The light was still dim, but nothing was moving, just the scent of goats in the air. We scanned with our flashlights, and there it was, perched high on a hay bale, staring at us with those red eyes. The air was tense, and the goats were making strange noises. It was a standoff, us staring at this odd creature, but we didn't move, and it didn't move. My spouse whispered, what does it want? I had no idea. Feeling like we had to do something, I took a slow step forward, not wanting to scare it. I remembered we had some overripe apples near the door. Food, I said softly, maybe that's all it wants. So I grabbed an apple and tossed it gently towards the creature, and to our surprise, it caught the apple and started eating. Feeling braver, I tossed another apple, but this time, the creature hopped down and came closer. It's just hungry, my spouse said, relieved and amazed. We kept feeding it apples until it seemed calm. We were discussing tossing the apples out the window to get it to leave when the creature stopped eating and looked past us towards the woods. We turned and saw shapes moving through the snow and darkness. My heart sank. There were more of them just outside the barn. We backed away slowly, not wanting to startle them. The first creature made some sounds and the others retreated into the woods. It glanced at us before disappearing into the night with the others. We stood there for a while, not saying anything, and eventually we secured the barn once more and trudged back to the house. We didn't discuss what to do next, we just knew it was beyond us, something we couldn't explain or control. The next day we found tracks all around the barn, too many to count, but we added more locks and carried on, keeping a closer watch, especially at night. We never saw the creatures again, but sometimes when the wind is just right, we hear those strange calls from the woods. We're convinced they're still out there. It's become part of our lives now, this mystery, this unexpected turn of events. We respect it, give it space. And that's our story. Thanks for listening. Hi there, I live near Chicago and I really love all things spooky and mysterious. Right now I'm studying parapsychology at DePaul University. I've had some strange experiences over the years, but one really sticks out to me because my friends were there too. This happened about 15 years ago, when my buddies Chris and Dan still lived with their families. Sadly, we lost touch since then, so I can't ask them to confirm any details. One night, we were all hanging out at their place, having some sodas, when Dan had an idea. 
He suggested we go to Bachelor's Grove Cemetery at midnight, a place you might know about if you like spooky stories. At first, everyone was excited, but as time passed, most of them got scared or too sleepy. In the end, only Mike, Dan, and I were brave enough to go, and it took us about 20 minutes by car to get to the cemetery. It looked really spooky, but everything seemed calm as we walked closer. But once we went through the gate, something felt strange, like when animals know something's about to happen. We didn't have flashlights, so we used our cell phones for light. It wasn't very bright, but it helped. We wandered around for a while, taking pictures and joking around. Then Mike had an idea. He suggested we sit quietly together for a bit. Dan told us about a rumor that if you bring flowers to Bachelor's Grove late at night, you might see ghostly figures with bouquets around a special gravestone where kids were buried. We found some dried roses on one of those graves. Dan picked them up and gave one to each of us. I thought it was a bit silly, but I went along with it. We sat down facing the gravestone and each other, waiting for something to happen. Just when we thought nothing would, Mike said, Hey guys, look over there. He pointed to our right about 30 feet away, where a big tombstone stood next to a leafless tree. We all looked and saw what Mike saw. Three figures in white robes, looking blurry like smoke, were walking in a line towards another grave covered in ivy. As they got closer, they became clearer. We could see they were holding flowers. It gave me goosebumps when Dan said, That's not just fog. Mike agreed, saying, Look how detailed they are. Those things are people. Right after he said that, the first figure reached the ivy-covered grave, put his bouquet on it, and stepped back in line. The other two did the same, then they disappeared next to that grave. I'd never seen anything like it before, and I haven't since. It felt like something out of a movie, then Dan was the first to talk, whispering, Did you see their faces? Mike and I hadn't. They were too blurry, or maybe our brains couldn't understand what we were seeing. We sat there quietly, feeling like we were in a dream. Then, without saying a word, we got up and walked back to the car. Nobody spoke. It was like we were afraid talking would make it all go away. We didn't talk until we were safe in the car with the doors locked and the engine running. Should we go back? Mike asked, sounding scared. Dan said, No way. I don't want to know more. I agreed, barely speaking then. We drove away, leaving the cemetery and the strange night behind us, but we couldn't forget what happened. The next day we talked about it, trying to make sense of it. We all remembered the figures, the flowers, and how weird it felt, but we remembered it a little differently. Mike thought the figures were real, but Dan thought they were like movie projections. I wasn't sure what to believe. It felt like a dream. We never went back to Bachelor's Grove, even though we talked about it. Life went on, and we stopped thinking about it as much. But whenever I pass a cemetery, I remember that night. I remember the chill I felt, the quiet agreement to leave, and the feeling that what we saw was real, even if we couldn't explain it. Years later, I still remember the cold air, the quiet graveyard, and how the moonlight didn't touch where those figures walked. I've read lots of books about ghosts, trying to find an answer, but nothing comes close. It's still a mystery, a real paranormal experience that I was a part of. And maybe, some things are meant to stay mysterious. Isn't that part of what makes the paranormal so interesting? I used to think scary stories were made up, but I changed my mind after a spooky encounter. My little cousin loves watching a channel with spooky tales. Sometimes when I babysit him, I'd hear these stories in the background while trying to do homework. But now I'm the one with a chilling story to share, and it really happened to me. I just got my driver's license so I could babysit my cousin without needing my parents to drive me around. One night I was driving back from a school concert with my friends, so we grabbed some McDonald's afterward, and by the time I dropped off my friend it was super late, almost midnight. I told them confidently that finding my way home was no big deal, but in reality I wasn't sure. I took a wrong turn and ended up on a long dark road in the countryside. It was spooky, with only trees and farmland around, so I tried to turn around but couldn't find a driveway. 
As I drove, I noticed a light coming towards me, and at first I thought it was a car, maybe one of those cool ones with blue headlights. But as it got closer, I realized it wasn't a car at all. It had way more lights than a car should, all blue and super bright. The light seemed to be coming right at me, and I panicked. I was about to swerve when the light suddenly shot up into the sky. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before, and the thing was huge, and the lights made it look even scarier. I sat frozen in my car, heart pounding until it was gone. Then, I turned around and drove home as fast as I could. I kept looking out for those lights the whole way, but didn't see them again. When I got home, I tried to find answers online, and some people say it could be military stuff, but I'm not so sure. Whatever it was, it definitely wasn't normal. It moved in ways no human aircraft could, and it was a truly bizarre experience.